So let us now create a drop down for this product page here. And first of all, we don't need the text box anymore. So I will go to the app dashboard, to the home dashboard. And what we will do now is we don't need this anymore. So I will just um, turn it off. Or if I need it on other products, I will just change the targeting then to show it just on specific products, not on this, because here we want to show the drop down. So now I disabled it. And also if I will refresh the page, we will see it's gone. So what we have to do now is, and we want to add a drop down. So you will find it not here. You will find it here, create drop downs, swatches and more. So I will now click the button. We also have to enter a unique field name, for example, test one. And what we want to show is a drop down. So I will click it here and we'll see it will appear on the right side. And now what we can do is we can now click this edit pencil and can start adding our values. So this is already the first drop down value. And we can say, for example, let's say, I don't know what can be the input of a drop down. For example, the size, right? Size M, size L, size XL. And we can also decide here the name of the drop down. In my case, you will also see this will be shown later here um, in, in, in the card as well. The name we will enter here, but drop down is fine. Here we can say choose a selection placeholder. We can also say we want to show a placeholder. Let us first of all have a look how it will look like. I will click save and also save the total settings. We will have successfully created now our options. And if I go back to this product here, I refresh it and we can see now the drop down with our values will appear here. And now you can also see what kind of things we can change. We can also change the placeholder, choose any option here according to our imag imagination and can also do further settings. Let's go back, click edit and check out what else we can do. We can now click the pencil here. And here you can see that was the placeholder, which is written here, but we also have the opportunity to say, we want to pre-select an entry that there will be not the text from above. For example, ML or XL should be pre-selected. That's possible. I will do so. I will save. I will preview it here. As soon as we refresh, we see now the placeholder is gone and the pre-selection is M according what we did. What else we can do? We can go to edit again. We can scroll down and we can also say right to left, but in our case, it's not necessary. We can say we want to also activate price add-ons. So that means we can activate a price add-on, for example, for M, for L or for XL. And each of them can have different kind of price add-ons. That's possible. Let's say, let me show it to you. We can now, let us say we have already created the price add-on in the past and we'll just select it from the drop-down product list or we will create a new one. Let's say here we want to have for M a price add-on and it should be $10. I click save. Now you see here, this is attached to value one. I will click save, save, successfully saved. I can now refresh the page and we see that the price will also automatically. So you can see that the default um, yes value is now adding here $10 on top because price add-on is active. For all the others, there is no price add-on, so price is lower. So that's possible. What else we can do? Let us scroll. Let us go to edit again, scroll down, and we can also say we want to have the translation so that, for example, if we have a translation plugin there to another language, we can also translate the values according to that. But in my case, everything is fine. And um, here are some further settings we can make. You can also see here the preview, how it will look like without the editing mode. You can click save, and then it will show always on the product page.